This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Williams versus Sims. You all have been together for four years. You have previously appeared in this courtroom. Yes. And Ms. Williams, since returning home, you have become concerned about Mr. Sims' behavior. Is that right? Yes, sir. Tell us why. All right, Mr. Judge Cutler. So, I'm bringing Ben back because I fell the last time that we were here previously on the physical contact question that was asked of me. Okay. I'm... So, once we got back home, you know, Ben started... I saw a lot of, uh, his demeanor changing, you know, and I became very suspicious. So, when I say that I became suspicious, these are the things that I noticed happening. Ben works 30 minutes away from the home. He started coming home an hour and a half late, two hours late sometimes, being on the phone, you know, but in private, you know, um... Just things of that nature, you know. So I was like, well, let me try to get my relationship, you know, find out what's going on. Uh, hold on. Did you all go back home and immediately things were amiss? Or did you think, okay, we've had this moment, we're moving forward, he's forgiven me, hopefully. D was there any, like, reprieve between being here in this courtroom and then the warning signs that you just talked about. So, when we were here, things seemed to be okay. Okay. Two weeks later and mm -hmm. ongoing is when it started going downhill. So, you for a moment thought things... Okay, we're gonna get over this. Everything... Things are right. right. Okay. Absolutely. And then Absolutely. that's when you start noticing his behavior. Yes. Now, I'm at the point when he come in the door, drop your pants. Drop your draw. <laughs> Lift it up. Let me check it out. You have not become a sniffer. I have. Oh! Yes, I have. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Miss yeah. Williams! Let me tell you! No. So, I want it clear... Yes. ...for the record... Uh-huh. ...that you were here before... Yes, ma'am. ...because Mr. Sims was accusing you of cheating. Yes, ma'am. And you failed the test physical. of physical contact That's with someone it. else. Yes. That was it. That was it. But you are left together with plans of happily ever after. Yes, ma'am. And you are here today now accusing him of cheating. Yes, ma'am. I'm innocent, Your Honor. See, it's not your okay. turn yet, sir. All right. <laughs> Mr. Sims, this... you over there shaking. Your Honor, this is... This case is ludicrous. I gotta say that. It's ludicrous. This is all about her and her insecurities about what happened last time. I accepted what happened last time. No, you didn't. Well, she says your demeanor changed, that when you got home, all of a sudden, you started taking a longer route to work. It's not that, Your Honor. It's not I'm not taking a longer commute to work. It's just sometimes I may hang out with the fellas at the work. They used to ask me to go out, and I'd be like, well, nah, you know, I'm gonna go home and just kick back with my lady, and that's that. But it's just now, you know... I want to be more interactive with my friends. I'm starting to hang out more. That's about it. There's nothing more to, to... No more to than that. What about the private calls? Like, she said, now you I... go and take these private phone calls. Why are you doing that now? I don't have a problem. That's her own insecurities again. There's You're... no private phone calls involved in this. I, if she's on... Like, a lot of times, she's watching television and she's yelling at me, be quiet, I'm watching Loving Hip Hop or something or doing this or doing that. And so, I'm, I'm gonna go in the next room and start talking to whoever, because she really don't want to pay me any attention at that moment. You know, I don't... But you said you're not talking to other women when you're in no, the other sir. room. No, sir. I'm a little petty. I get it. I'm part of the petty gang. Yeah, I do things <laughs> to get on underneath her skin. You passed the petty gang. Uh, I... So, what do you do to get underneath her skin as it relates to, you know, her allegations against you of cheating? I, I might take a pop shot at her, too. Be like, you know, like, if it's... Like, say, we could be sitting there watching you guys on TV. I was like, and then somebody get caught in something, I'm like, hey, babe, you, you know, I may throw a little slide in there. You got caught, remember? You know, she... Oh! So, so, the she very, so, the very thing we tell people, look, don't keep bringing up the past. You got to move don't forward past this. Don't keep yourself you're, out of a good relationship. Your you're using Let that know. to take shots at her. <laughs> yes. Don't cheat yes. yourself out of a good relationship yes. now. Yes. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. So, you're in the petty gang. Yes, ma'am. And you're kind of taking pot shots. You've owned that. But are you Own petty it. enough to cheat? I'm not petty enough to cheat. Yes, you are. So, he said he's part of the petty gang, but he's saying he's not cheating. What makes you think that he is cheating? I have a few instances. Okay. Okay. Doing laundry one day. Oh. Putting clothes away. I see these size 13 purple underwear. I wear size 8, honey. I ain't that big. Where these 13s come from? Ben says, oh, I don't know. What's
What you mean? How did you get in our laundry, Ben? Miss Williams, yeah. when you found these patterns, what did you do? What you mean? I went off. All right? I'm not... We're not gonna talk about it. There's nothing to talk about. I've been doing your laundry for five years. There's no other panties in there but these size eight. And you Where confront... these 13s come from? And you confront him about it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And Mr... Mr. Sims? Did she confront you about these panties? It was all Greek to me. Did she confront you about these panties? She confronted me. I mean, I'm sitting there watching the TV and bam! (laughs) Here they come. And what did you tell her? It wasn't me. (laughs) Who else could it have been if it wasn't you? Your Honor, I don't know who it was, but it wasn't Ben. Were you being petty? Was this an instance where you (laughs) grabbed some woman's panties just to get her wild up? (laughs) But nah, I'm petty, but not that petty. (laughs) Not that petty. <laughs> Never. Not that petty. Okay, so these were underwear that were not like yours. Nothing. Nothing like no, yours. Ma'am. They were with his life. Your Honor. Ma'am. Now, did he, were they in a hamper or something like yeah, that? Because we have the dirty clothes hamper. So I go and I separate the clothes to have them wash, you know, and here these 13s are. Same color as the shirt, actually. So, Ms. Williams, now we know what you've seen. Have you found anything that makes you think he's cheating? Absolutely. Well, we were uh, <laughs> cleaning out his car one day. Oh, boy. Mm. And uh, I see him, you know, so we're talking, you know, getting along, whatever, and I see him reach down real quick to try and pick the condom up. Oh. I said, oh, no, 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 no. What is that? Oh, Jeanette, here you go, because he calls me Jeanette. Oh, Jeanette, here you go with this. Let me see this condom. Where does condom come from? So I put him out. He tells me that it was this this man here, my brother, Mr. Williams. His condom. So you all are cleaning out his His, car. His car. Okay. And the condom falls. But he trying to hurry up and scramble some paper over the stuff to cover it up. So you couldn't see it. So I couldn't see it. But I got four eyes. (laughs) So I'm I'm gonna see this real quick. Mr. Williams. Mr. Sims, did, did the condom fall out? Your Honor, yes, it did fall out. Okay. Where did it fall out from? It was in between the seat <laughs> and the, you know, yeah. between, I was cleaning in yeah. between the seat, you know, where people sit in your seat right there. I, when I seen it, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> so you tried to get I, it. I, I'm saying, oh, God, I just, this not, this, I just, I got the, if it wasn't for bad luck, I have no luck at all, Your Honor. So oh. I said, okay. <laughs> so I, I, I handed the, well, where did this come from? Mm-hmm. And what did you tell her? I said, it was my brush. It was his. <laughs> so he didn't drop any keys. He didn't drop any change. He didn't drop any dollars. He didn't drop his wallet. The only thing he dropped... Is a magnum. ...was a condom. <laughs> a magnum. Your Honor, it may my sound crazy, you. but it's the truth. You right. You brought a witness with you. Yes, sir. All right, sir, would you stand up and step to the podium, please? <clears throat> and would you state your name, please, for the record? Alfred Williams. And, Mr. Williams, what is your relationship to Miss Williams and Mr. Sims? Miss Williams is my sister and it's my brother-in-law, Benjamin. So the plaintiff, Miss Miss Williams, is your sister? His yes, sister. sir. Okay. And you... Look at this. And you testifying for Mr. Sims? You see this? I'm here to tell the truth, to get the truth out. What? Okay. Right. Oh. Mm. And what is the truth? The truth is that it was that my it condom. That it wasn't your condom? It was it my was condom. Ben's. It was your condom? Yes. So why was your condom <laughs> in Mr. Sims's car? because he gave me a ride to my friend's house. And when I got to my friend's house, went there to go, you know, have a little party with my friend. And when I got there... How convenient. I realized that I didn't have what I came with. So... <laughs> it was... So it just turned into a Netflix night. So we just... Ne- Netflix and chill. For real. So when he <laughs> came back to pick me up, I didn't even... I had such a good time, I didn't even realize that that the condom was in his car. I probably figured that I probably dropped it outside the car or probably just forgot it at home. And that's your story? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Mr. Williams. You may be seated. <laughs> Ms. Wi- Ms. Williams... You, 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 is... You're not buying any of this? None of it. And you my brother. What are you doing? <laughs> you should be over here. <laughs> what are you doing? I, that does raise a question. Why would your brother... Lie. I mean, what does he have to gain? Because they all lie together. The I don't know. They probably, I don't know, messing with sisters or something. Oh boy. So you just went right there. I did, as and, always. But don't you think? I mean, your brother and you have grown up together. What he. Mean? Well, I'm just saying he, he knows you're a force to reckon with. Man. I am. And I just would think he'd think twice about it because you're gonna be mm-hmm. his sister forever. Yeah. 
I would think well, that... Well, after these results come back, I don't know. I might disown both of them. Oh, boy. Well, Mr. Cutler, I think we got enough. Let me tell you what we got. <laughs> Mr. Sims is coming home late from work. And they, he's only about 10, 15 minutes from home, and it's taking him an hour and a half, two hours. And then a condom falls out when they're cleaning the car, and he says, it's not mine, it's your brother's. And she doesn't believe any of it. She's like, it's yours. And well, I don't know why my brother's doing this. And for these reasons, she believes that Mr. Sims is cheating. And Mr. Sims, you deny all of this. Yes, sir, I deny it all. Well, we're about to find out. That's, no, that's right. Because this court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court will call certified polygraph examiner Tommy Platt to determine, is he cheating? Tommy <laughs> Platt. Mr. Platt, how are you? Good, Your Honor. It's good to see you. Good to see y'all. Now, Mr. Platt, you have over 30 years of law enforcement experience and 11 years as a polygraph examiner, correct? Yes, sir. You've done thousands of polygraph examinations. Yes, sir. And you conducted a polygraph examination of Mr. Sims, correct? I did. You know what, love? This is just something I noted. When we talked to him about is he cheating and all the evidence against him, his response sounded a lot like Ms. Williams when she was standing over there. Mm. It's just very interesting that... I don't know if you noted it, but I did. And so, I, I do, too. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and, she, yeah. and she failed her test. <laughs> At least yeah. one. Yeah, just one. Yeah, just one. Yeah. But just, just one, one, but she yeah. did fail. All right, and you right. saying that's not gonna happen to no, you? No, it's not gonna happen to yeah, me. All right. Same thing. All right. You asked Mr. Sims, does the underwear your girlfriend found belong to another woman with whom you had sexual intercourse? What was his response to that question? He stated no. What did the polygraph determine? The polygraph determined that he was being truthful. You asked Mr. Sims, have you had sexual intercourse with any woman other than Miss Williams since returning from this court? What was his response? He stated no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was telling the truth. Well, we have one more question. You also asked Mr. Sims, have you had physical sexual contact with any woman other than Ms. Williams since returning home from this court? What was his response? He stated yes, he confessed. Well, did he give an explanation with that? Um, Your Honor, he stated that he went to a strip club a few weeks ago and he paid for four lap dances grabbed some boobs, butts, and the strippers grinded on his man section. <laughs> and so that was what the sexual contact was you were referring I to. Lie about it, Your Honor. I went to the strip club. All right, Ms. Williams, he has admitted to contact with a stripper or more. So what are you thinking right now? No, this might be the end for us. There's no reason to go to a strip club and get four. Would, would it have been better if he got one? It wouldn't have been better if he got none. He shouldn't have been there. Let me strip for you. Give me them dollars. You know, some people don't consider going to a strip club being unfaithful. Oh, I do. You consider you that unfaithful. You got other breasts in your face. You got, you know, private areas riding your manhood. That's cheating. In your mind, that's cheating? Yeah, absolutely. That's that same test I feel, right? Physical contact. But... Same one. In my mind, there is a vast difference between an ongoing relationship with a particular woman as opposed to that's what strip clubs are about. Now, that's a conversation that, you know, I think couples should have. What do I consider to be cheating? Now, I am not hardly trying to tell you to keep him or take him home with you, but I do think it's a huge difference between going to a strip club and hook it up with a co-worker. Somebody he gonna see every day. And the thing is, he admitted to it. He didn't deny it. Yeah. Well, he should've took me, too. Well, that's a, con that's a grown folks conversation I don't want to be a part of, but... 
I know couples who go to uh, strip clubs together. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there for you to think about that. Now, you each have been at that podium. You were at the podium last time. She's at the podium this time. Each of you has been the one that's been accused. You've each had your turn now. Enough. We don't want to see you back in this court again <laughs> as litigants. <laughs> you all have been together for 24 years. You're married. You have six children together. And I understand, Mr. Mora, you have recently moved out and you all are now living apart. Is that right, Ms. Mora? That's correct. You've opened this case. Tell me what's at stake here. Your Honor, just everything we've put together, all the years we've been together, you know, I, he's cheated on the in the past, and we've gotten over that. You know, we built a life together with our children. So, are you saying that if you find out Mr. Moore is cheating, you're done? You you're gonna throw away your marriage, your <clears throat> everything you built over the 24 years you've been together? I think it's time for me to start thinking about myself. So you're gonna put you first if this happens? Yeah. Okay. I think it's time to start thinking about me. All right. And how does it feel? I mean, I. Uh, that's a long time. I mean, we've been together 37 years, but at the 24-year mark, that's a long time. So, how does it Isn't... feel knowing that this is potentially in jeopardy? It's not very good. It doesn't feel very good, but, you know, when you have to deal with seeing things that, you know, are happening, like he doesn't come home, and then pretty soon he doesn't come home for days at a time, and then, you know, and the next thing you know, you know, you find glitter on his face and glitter on his thighs. You start to say, okay, yeah, enough. There's a time when you gotta say enough is enough. Well, Mr. Moore, you know, oh, she says little... you cheated in the past and she feels that, you know, it's coming back again. She's seeing it again. What do you have to say in response to that? Are you cheating? No, I'm not cheating. But it... How ahead, does it make you feel to be accused of cheating? It, it made me feel like I ain't nothing, you know? Why did you move out? Because every time that I come from work, and she kills me the, anything, you know, and, and I, I'm tired of getting, being home and, and be tacked on it, you know. So you, when you come home from a hard day's work, you feel like you just get attacked. Yeah. And being accused, and you're like, I need some peace. Yeah. So you have moved out of the home because of that. Yeah, I moved out of the home because we got our children, and our children told us, you guys don't even be together, so... And, you know, I'm tired. I'm, I'm, I'm just tired of, you know, be coming home tired. I just want to take a shower and relax. You know, when you're married, see, I believe it. When you're married see, with somebody, I believe it, trust. I agree that you should you know, have trust. And, and, and when I told her that I, you know, I don't know where it comes from, she should have trust me. That you don't but trust me, you I'm don't like believe me. Because you've given me reason not okay. to trust in the past. All right. Now, Miss Moore, you said you found glitter on his, on his face? On his face and on his thigh. Oh. Face and thigh. Okay, how did that happen? He came home, he was getting ready for bed. I noticed on his face, you know, there's a little sparkle going on his face. As he was getting into bed, I said, what's on your thigh? You got glitter on your thigh, too. So, Mr. Moore, where did this well, glitter come I, from? I really don't know where it come from. I know they ain't coming from no woman because I ain't been with no woman. But I do know that I deal with a lot of trash. Uh-huh. Because I'm working on Nesty's house. I already show you the picture. Yeah, I, I'm seeing I'm working with Nesty's house, and I, I wish I would have taken a picture of the house where there's glitters all over the floor. And when I blow that with my blow, it, it, it'll, you know, out of the window, it'll get in my clothes, it'll get in on me, you know? Okay, but you know what, I, 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 Mr. Moore... And, and I'm coming from me hogging on the women and all that stuff because I don't got time for this. Okay, but Mr. Moore, look, I'm a craft girl. I make, I love to work with craft, glitter, all of that. It gets, it only gets where it touches. I have never found glitter under my clothes. Maybe Man. we had to use the bathroom. It was on his hands. He used the bathroom while he was working, and yes. you know that's possible. That's true. Well, now that's a good argument, Mr. Cutler. Yeah. Do you have that's... any other facts that support that Mr. Moore is cheating? I went to go help out a friend who was getting into some trouble, and she handed me her phone so I could make a phone call to a family member for her. Okay. And I look at the phone, and there's text messages between this person and my husband. Oh. What? And I open it up, and there's text messages talking about, oh, I want to take you out when I get some money from him to her. Mr. Moore, 
Okay. Why are you texting this other woman about what you gonna give to her? Okay, I did it. I did it. I did text that to her. But before I did that, she forgot that she was using my phone texting my friend to come and see him. And my friend would text her, come and see me. Don't tell nobody. Don't tell that. And I. Okay. Wait. Hold on. Hold on, Mr. Where Mr. Was Water. This? Hold on. So that? you admit sending the text to her yeah, friend? Yeah, I did it, sending the text, because, you know, uh, Chu can play the same game. She did it before I did. You're saying that you text her friend just to get back at your wife? Yeah, because they were trying... She was meeting with my friend behind my back, too. So, mm -hmm. so you're deflecting. And, and you know she, what defle the only reason I knew that because the text message was on my phone that she forgot to erase it. No. Have you ever had sex with this no, woman? Never. Have you taken her on a date? No. Nope. It says you want to take her out. Well, I did it say that I, I, I want to take you out, but we never did it. We never. I never did take her out. Did you see text messages that were? A bunch of text messages over a period of time? Yeah, there were several text messages. They had been texting for a while. And the person that he's talking about saying that I text that person or that I was trying to... That person was long gone by this time. OK, so these text messages that you saw from him to your friend said, I want to take you out. What, what else did they yeah, say? Yeah, I love you. Sam, I love you back. And at the end of it, she made sure to put on there, make sure you delete these messages. <laughs> Mr. Okay. Moore, Mr. Moore, Mr. Moore. Okay, you're texting this woman all these messages. I love you. I want to be with you. I want to take you out. And then she tells you, she's responding, and then tells you, make sure you delete all these. That has all the signs of something wrong. Well, well hold on now. Uh, you know, because I believe in what's the evidence? The evidence is the text messages. It's between, it's the word to word. You know, she can say whatever she want to say. I can say whatever I want to say, too. You know what I mean? But I never told no woman that I love beside her. Here's the thing. All of these kind... I don't have that definitive piece that makes me go, OK, I get it. Something doesn't smell right. I mean, that's... Is something going... I mean... Do, do you have any other reason to believe that he's cheated? Well, yeah, he came home one night and when, you know, after we had gotten into bed, we were getting ready to get romantic, and I'm down to do some oral, and I smell perfume. You smell perfume? Yeah. So... Uh, not your perfume? Not my perfume, no. And it certainly wasn't his perfume. This was definitely not a manly scent. It smelled like flowers. Some didn't smell right, did it? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it didn't smell right at all. Yeah. The only reason she said that because she forgot what I look like or what I smell like because we ain't been together for like two months. We ain't had no, no sex. Do you it's normally smell like flowers? Did. Oh look, I always, I always <laughs> use, I always using my deodo every time that I take a shower and I go to be with her. I use my deodo and I put it all around me every time. So she might but smell that, but she probably forgot what I smell like. Mr. Morta, I mean, after 24 years, you think she forgot what you smell like? <laughs> Y'all been... <laughs> you, we've been together for 24 years. But... Well, and moreover, Cutler, it smell also... like flowers. I don't... I don't... That's just not a thing. Uh, my... That don't burn? I mean, I would think it's that... It don't burn. It don't burn. I gotta <laughs> ask you, Ron. Have you heard of using your Rolo on in your private area? Is that is that a new one? For I you? worked in the jail for twelve years and never seen anybody do that. Okay, <laughs> all right, it's just not me. No. Okay, all right. <laughs> it was a cover up. How is how do you feel about the fact that Mr. Moore has moved out the house, got his own place because of your accusations? You know, I don't think it's because of my accusations. I think he moved out to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Because you were saying that before now, he's been coming in later and later mm -hmm. and later. Now he ain't got to worry about when he come in, does he? Right, right. So now he, he don't have to worry about coming home. He don't have to worry about who's coming home to, to his yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. You know, his, his friend that he says goes around with all kinds of women. He don't have to worry about them coming around, you know, being at his house. Mr. Moore, do you have this apartment so that you can do what you want to do with other women? Oh, man. The only reason I moved out of my house because... Who want to live with a person that call you F-word, 
B words, you know, call you usually. Oh, I do is work, you wanna I work seven days a week. But who wanna be with a person that they own you all the time? Okay. You know, I, I think we've heard enough. Think- Let me tell you what we got. The text from Mr. Moore and Miss Morris phone. And then the killer being delete. Please delete these. The other is his private area smell like flowery perfume. And she thinks it's either Another woman's been there, or he's covered up from another woman. And we got and, the glitter. And we've got the glitter on his face and his thighs, and he's moved out. And for all these reasons, Mr. and Mrs. Moore's 24-year marriage is at stake. She's like, I, I gotta look out for me. I can't continue yeah. to do this. Well, to sort all of this out, this court has done a full and a complete investigation. At this time, the court will call licensed polygraph examiner Kendall Shull to determine, is he cheating? Rob, well, please report Mr. Shull in. Kendall Shull. Good day, Mr. Shull. How are you? Great, Your Honor. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. It is good to see you. Good to see you. You conducted a polygraph examination of Mr. Moore. I did. You asked Mr. Moore... Since you've been married, have you had sexual intercourse with the woman you were texting and whose phone your wife had in her possession? What was his response to that question? He said, no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. There's a little smile from Ms. Moore. You also asked Mr. Moore, the day your wife claimed your penis smelled like women's perfume, did you have sexual intercourse with someone other than your wife, Mrs. Moore? What was his response? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. All right. You finally asked Mr. Moore, since you've been married, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than your wife, Mrs. Mora? <laughs> what was his response? Your Honor, on this question... Your Honor, on this question, he said yes and confessed. <laughs> All right, Mr. Moore. Uh, it's happened yeah, so... not too long ago before we came to the court. All right, so here's the thing. How did... Have you had this sexual encounter since you moved out of the house? No, it's after I moved out of the house. After we you moved out together. of the house? We was not together. So after you moved out, since you moved out of the house, you've had sex with another woman? Yeah, after I moved We're out of the house. We're still married. Yeah. yeah. You're still We're married, still Mr. Married. Moore. Just because you are physically separated, trying to figure out what to do with your marriage, that's not a free reign to go out and just, you know, have a bachelor well, pad, have a you party. Know, you know what? Uh, they want to shoot me for that. It's okay. Things happen. I had a few drinks with this woman, and it happened. Oh, I know I was yeah. truthful to her for too many years, and I worked hard for her, and I give her heart, everything that she wanted. And she didn't appreciate it. Mm-hmm. So, Mr. Moore, do you not want to be married to Mrs. Moore anymore? Are no you more. done? I'm done. Oh, you want a divorce? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I, I can't live it like this no more. You know, I know I'm not the perfect man in the world, but I just want to be living my life in peace. This is a 24-year relationship. I know. You're married. You got six kids. And you're throwing all that away? It's because my kids are not little anymore. This is the time for me and her to have fun and live a life. But it, it's not working that way. The thing is, when me and her have sex or whatever, sex, she's over here on the phone and the internet, and, and she don't pay attention to what I'm doing or what we're doing. We started doing something, and then she goes, oh, hold on, wait a minute, you know, my show's on, my show's on. What kind of thing is that? You know what I mean? She made me feel like it, she... I ain't nothing no more. Do you still want to be married to him? Of course I want to be married to him. That's like my right arm, you know? And he says he doesn't want to be married, but yet anytime there's an issue or there's a problem, he comes running back home. 
the look on his face and the determination with which he said, I want a divorce and I want mm -hmm. peace, tells me that you all are probably done. And so, you know, maybe that's what you all need to do. Maybe y'all need a true, real break. Not only like a break to think about it, but a break to do you. Maybe you'll figure out, golly, we should have done this sooner. Or maybe you'll figure out, oh my God, I had the right person. Let me go back to him. But what I do know is at this moment, y'all are done because he's done. Yeah. And as sad as that is, it's better to figure it out and get on with your life. You're right. You know what I'm saying? Knowing that he slept with somebody else, I'm dying anyway. You all are living together. And it's my understanding from the court papers, you fell in love on the job. Tell me about that, Miss Wilkes. Okay, well, I drive cabs. Um, I usually drive at nighttime. So I got a call one night to pick up someone. So I went to go pick him up and I was taking him somewhere. Um, we was just basically conversing, you know, getting to know each other just through me driving the cab. And then I found out that um, he was interested. He was asking me all kind of different questions. We found out that we share the same birth date. So that's kind of what brought us together. Like, we was the same age, same day. Um, so we just started talking from that point. So that was more than just a cab ride right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can say that. So how did you go from a cab ride to living together? I always say he kind of snuck in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> how did he sneak in? Uh, he brought his clothes over there to wash and dry. And when he brought his clothes, they just never left. <laughs> All right, so Mr. Dixon, were you, were you sneaking in? I was just like, hey, let's go with it then. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna leave my clothes here as long as possible until you tell me to get my stuff and go, you know? <laughs> so when did you realize that you were falling for him? Well, he gave me some money to get my hair did. <laughs> All right. This is a nice, pragmatic relationship. I like that. I, Washing clothes, you know, got to get my hair done, here's some money. That's a nice, pragmatic relationship. I like but that. Like she do for me, I can do for her. Yeah. What is it about her made you say, this, this, this has legs right here. This is somebody I could maybe be with. Well, I started feeling her. She's like, she could cook, and I like to eat. You know, the way she smiled at me, the way she was talking to me. You know, it's like the conversation she was giving me, it seemed like she was a real woman by her character and how she was talking, you know? She bought me a little turtle, you know? Is that the little turtle? You know, she bought me a little turtle <laughs> for a little birthday trip. We took at uh, Daytona or whatever. So I was like, that's what's up. Because we were supposed to be getting shirts. Somehow she just bought me a turtle and she was like, I'm gonna name it Reggie. <laughs> okay. So Reggie the yeah. turtle. Nothing um... says love like a turtle. <laughs> I mean, come on now. It is cute, but seriously, why a turtle? <laughs> the turtles was cheaper than the shirts. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pragmatic woman. I uh, love it. So, Ms. Wilkes, how do you go from buying a turtle... A love turtle. A love turtle. Yeah. ...to being in court today? Why are you here? I want to know what's going on. I just want to know if he's actually being involved with someone else. So you think he's cheating? Basically, yeah. The way he moved, the way he act, the things that he do, the things that I have found and stuff like that. Okay. Now, Mr. Dixon, are you cheating? I ain't cheating at all. It's like I come from work sometimes, and sometimes I feel like she'll smell me. She like did it about twice. I say, okay, she what does my that private look part. like? She smells my private part. They oh. thinking I've been cheating. Trust she me, right? smells your private part? Yeah, she don't smell it twice, about twice. Okay, what does that look like when you come in? I, I don't like that, you know, because I feel I... like I'm sweating and everything from work and everything. Well, I'm gonna go and have sex with somebody and after this guy work, you know, sweaty. Okay, okay wait, 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 okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. No, you, I... you walk in the house and immediately your girlfriend smells your privates. Yeah. It's like when you come in the house, she's like, where you been? I'm like, I've been hanging out with the fellas after work, you know, around to the corner to the bar. She was like, and you come in the house this time of night? She was like, let me smell your... I, I let her, though. I let her, but I don't like that. Wait so, when he hits the door, you just say, drop him. No, I be like, let me smell your penis. <laughs> and you sniff it. I took a whiff. <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously. Uh... <laughs> I, yeah. I don't... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna let touch that. One that. Go. I'm gonna yeah. let that one go. Let, leave All it right. there. Have you found any physical evidence of why you believe Mr. Dixon is cheating? 
Okay, one day I was going to the dollar store, just one Sunday morning. Usually, I put my bags in the front seat with me. Some say, put them in the back seat. So I go to put them in the back seat, and I see a little gold shimmering thing on the floor, and it's a piece of condom wrapper. <laughs> I have, I also have the picture of it, because I took the picture. Oh, okay. Rod, would you please get that yes, uh, piece of evidence, please? Thank you, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay, so <laughs> what I'm looking at is 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 this your hand holding the condom That's my wrapper? Hand holding it. And this is in your car. In my car, in the back seat of the driver's side. It's only two people that drive my car. That's me, and that's him. It's not mine, so it must be his. And so you believe based on finding this in your car, mm -hmm. that he had sex in your car? Either he had sex in my car, he had sex at their house one and brought the condom and left it on the floor. Because he's always dropping <clears throat> things from out his pocket. And it goes in the back seat on the floor. His comb, chapstick, change. So, what was your explanation for her finding this in her car? <laughs> it's not mine, and so I'ma say it like this here. Anything could happen. It's like the window could be down, you know, something could fly out in here, you know. It okay, could you anything. driving? I don't, it just could have been anything. I don't think that could have been my pocket. To, That's I just have... the top of a condom, now. There ain't no whole Look, condom, right? I have driven a lot of cars in my life. I've driven a lot of miles. Right. I can honestly say, never. That I've never, ever. never, ever in the history ever. of car driving had a condom wrapper fly in my window. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> Okay, well, his brother was staying with us. I don't remember the time of night it was, but I had done went to sleep. I woke up, it was just his brother in the living room by himself. So I was like, well, where's Reggie? He was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. So he getting his phone all nervous. So I was like, mm, let me put my inspector gadget hat on. So I get my cell phone and I go on his online banking and I see different withdrawals from the bank. And then I see a hotel. So you go on your phone and you see a hotel charge? Yes, I do. For that night? For that night. So then what do you do? Well, I'm calling him, I'm texting. His phone must be dead because it's going straight to voicemail. So I'm sitting around. It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. He didn't get in till like 6 o'clock. And so that's when it... You know, I made up a little story about, oh, well, you know, such and such told me that they seen you at the hotel, you know, just to get him to tell on himself. And so that's when he admitted that he was at the hotel, but then he said, you know, he came up with this bogus story about how he got it for somebody else. Mr. Dixon, you were at a hotel at 2 o'clock in the morning and your girlfriend didn't know about it. Well, it's like 3 something in the morning. I got a call from a friend. She was in a situation. And I was like, that friend right there been before her. I ever met her. So... I was, like, looking out for a friend, so got a room for her and her boyfriend. But she got a boyfriend. What's she well, need for? Well, the boyfriend yeah. must be don't got a job, must be, and he can't afford a room because they ain't had no way to go. So I was like, I had some money in my pocket. She look out for me, I'm look out for her. So, but here's Somebody the thing. She was calling you. Why didn't you answer your phone? My phone was dead at the time. Let, let me ask you something. Is this a woman you had been intimate with in the past? I was once, twice. Uh. But that was in the past. That's in the past, though. Right. But, like, you know, that's a friendship. You know, it's sometimes things happen. And, you know, when you're in lonely nights, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, you got, a, you got a friend, you know, just hang out, and some things just happen at that moment. And but just, you just, didn't like, tell me at that dealt. point in time. You didn't I tell didn't me. I didn't let her know, because <laughs> I, I would let her know. She would have think that so something was going on So that's why there's no trust, so, well, because I, I, you didn't tell me. And you don't believe any of it? No, they could have been having a threesome for all I know. No, I don't believe it. Mr. Dixon, I got to say, it's, it's not looking good. But here's the thing. We have his side, we have her side, and we have the woman in the hotel side. Ron, would you please escort the witness in? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Milton, Mr. Dixon says he got a hotel for you and your boyfriend. Is that correct? <laughs> no. OK. Uh... Who did he get the hotel room for? It was about my boyfriend, but my boyfriend was not there. A friend of his was there, though. A friend of whose? His. Mr. Mr. Dixon? Dixon? Yes. Mr. Dixon, who was there with you all? It was me, her, and my brother. 
How hard is okay. that true? So why was your brother there? Because he was the driver for me, and he left. So then it was just you two there? Yes. Were like... you intimate with Miss Milton no, I the wasn't. night in question? No, I wasn't. Miss Wilkes, do you believe this? I see the expression on your face. No, not really. What are you thinking? That they were intimate that night? Miss Milton. Were you intimate? With Mr. Dixon that night? The God on his truth, I cannot answer that. He's right. I don't... The, the circumstances surrounded around my boyfriend. Like, we were going through something and I went to my go-to guy. That's Reggie. I'm, I, he comes to me when he has stuff. That's what <coughs> it is. We're friends. Like, we gonna always be friends. I can't, I can't even sit here and tell you that we did or that we did not. Not that particular night, no. I was crying and drunk. I have no way of knowing. None. But it's a possibility. Yes, it is. And you have been intimate with Mr. Dixon in the past. Yes. And so you're in a hotel room with a woman that you used to be intimate with. Was You've she... already lied about the fact that her boyfriend was there when he wasn't. And you're telling this court that nothing happened? Nothing happened. Miss right, Wilkes, so... what are you thinking right now? I'm disgusted. And I that's can see I, that. I, one thing I hate is a liar because I'm too real. Everything that ever happens to me, whether a guy or a girl or whoever trying to talk to me, he knows it. You know, he's, he's seen it. My phone is not locked. I don't have nothing to hide. So I feel like if something is going on or something did go on, we wasn't having no problems because the relationship was fresh. So if he did, I'm disgusted. All right. Well, to get the answer, the court has retained the services of private investigator and certified polygraph examiner Patrick Coffey. Ron, would you please escort Mr. Coffey into the courtroom? Yes, sir. How are you, Mr. Coffee? I'm doing great, ma'am. You? We're good. Thank you. Mr. Coffee, uh, what did you do to investigate this case? A member of our team conducted a full forensic analysis of Mr. Dixon's phone. He was able to recover current and deleted messages, browser history, photos, and videos. So what did your team uncover? According to my team's finding, the three most used applications were Facebook, Twitter, and Chatterbait. What is Chatterbait? Chatterbait is a live adult video chat room. On this application, a viewer can interact with live sex streaming by adding their suggestions in an open forum. Mr. Dixon, Chatterbait. I don't know what Chatterbait is. I You've never heard, heard of Chatterbait. chatterbait. It's on I, your phone. Well, I, I ain't never look at no Chatterbait in my phone, so I don't know what it could be. All right, did you find anything else of interest on Mr. Dixon's phone? Oh, yes. Tell us about that. Our team was able to uncover more than a dozen naked photos. Some were nude photos, and others were photos of two or more people engaging in sexual activities. Mr. Dixon, who are these people that you have photos on your phone engaging in sexual activity? Well, I look at porn, so I might could have screenshot something, or I might could have been saving videos in my phone because, you know, you could download them videos in your phone, so could have been downloaded videos and no telling, because I ain't had none of that. So I don't know what none of that is. So these are downloaded videos of strangers? Exactly. It might be strangers, yeah, because that ain't nothing me. I don't recall myself. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right, so, Mr. Coffey, after examining these photos and videos, was Mr. Dixon in any of those pictures or videos? According to our findings, Mr. Dixon was not in any of the photos, and we believe that these are downloads from pornographic sites. So, Ms. Wilkes, did you know about these things in his phone? I mean, I know he watched porn in his phone, but I didn't know he'd be screenshotting and saving pictures. <laughs> To further investigate this, the court also ordered Mr. Dixon to undergo a polygraph examination, correct? Yes, sir. You asked him a number of questions. The first was, the night you were in the hotel, did you have sexual intercourse with Miss Milton? What was his response? He answered no. What did the lie detector determine? And the polygraph determined he was being truthful. Ms. Wilkes, tell me what you're thinking right now. I mean, just because he told the truth, uh, uh, because he was being truthful about them not being intimate, you still was there and you still lied about it. So that don't make me feel no better. 
Mr. Dick, do you see the concern th that this has caused? I see that, and I know I made a mistake by not telling her at the time, but I'm just here to let her know, like, she done got the answers she need to know, and she can trust me again. All right. And there was one last question. Since moving in with Miss Wilkes, have you had sexual intercourse with any woman other than her? What was his response? He answered no. What did the lie detector determine? The polygraph determined he was being truthful. <laughs> Ms. Wilkes, any relationship has got to be built on trust. And, I mean, you all met in a cab, but now you're driving him away because you don't trust him. Mm -hmm. You've got to trust him. He's told you, and you knew this when you, when you met him. He's a, an outgoing person, but that doesn't necessarily mean something's going on. Well, let me just what? say this, Mr. Dixon. You need to do some things to build her faith in you. Clearly, you love her. And even though she's trying to hold it back, she loves you, too. Yeah, because she know I could cook But for you her need too. to move forward. <laughs> now, what is it that you want to do with your relationship? I mean, now that I know the truth... Yes, ma'am. I guess I'm willing to work past it as long as he could be... continue to be honest with me from this day forward. 